Hi, and welcome to part three of my PowerShell tutorial series. Today, we're going to be looking at arrays and array lists as part of data structures. In our next video, uh, we're going to be looking at the hash tables and custom objects in PowerShell. But I figured I'd spend this video really focusing on array and array lists and the differences between the two and the performance differences between the two, because uh, the performance difference is huge. Um, and I will be showing you an example of how big the differences are, especially if you have a large data set. Uh, anything over 100 elements, I would say use an array list. If you're under 100 elements or 100 items, you could use an array. I'd probably still use an array list just because, I mean, just because your data set today is 100 elements doesn't mean it's not going to be going higher. Um, with time. So let's start off this video. Uh, like I said in my last video, I always like to set the strict mode on. So let's go ahead and let's set that on here. And let's just make sure that it's on here by referencing a variable here, like colors. And let's just make sure that it does not exist. We see that it does not exist and it gives us an error. So that is awesome. So let's go ahead and let's get started here by creating an array. Uh, so we're going to be storing an array in our variable, and our variable is going to be called names. Now, to generate an array, it is simply by doing a variable which is equal to an at symbol and an open and close parentheses. This will generate an empty array. Now, an array in PowerShell is actually a fixed size. So we can actually see this here if we do names dot get type and we're going to do a names dot is fixed size. So if we run all three of these here, we are going to see that it is an array. And let's just get this a little bit clearer here. It is a fixed size. So what that means here is that PowerShell treats this array as the size that it starts off with. If we ever add or remove a element to it, PowerShell in the back end will actually destroy this array and recreate it with the new size. This is where the performance issues really start to happen with arrays once you start getting into larger array sizes. But let's go ahead and let's actually put some elements in our array here. So let's go ahead and let's just put some names here, some common names. We got Bob, we got Steve, and let's put uh, John here. And let's run these again. And we see that they are the same thing. We are a fixed size and we are only an array. Now we could print off this array by simply referencing dollar sign names. And we see Bob, Steve, and John. Now we could actually print off specific items in an array uh, by referencing the index position that we want to print off. The thing to keep in mind with arrays and index positions in PowerShell, like a lot of other programming languages, it is a zero-based indexing system. So the first element is actually element zero. And we can actually see this if we do dollar sign names at position zero, we are going to get Bob. And if we do position one, we are going to get Steve. So here we could actually easily add an element and remove an element into an array. Uh, removing an element is a little bit confusing for arrays compared to an array list. But let's get started and let's just add an element. So if we first take our array, now there's two ways of doing this. Let's do it both ways. So let's do dollar sign names equals dollar sign names plus, and let's add Paul in here. And let's print off the array after. So if we go ahead and we add Paul, we see that Paul is now after John. And if we reference the position three, we can see that it is Paul, which is the one we just added. Now, if for some reason we actually did position four, because our strict mode is on, 
we're going to get that the index was outside the bounds of the array. Now, the reason why I like to set the strict mode on is let's show this example without strict mode. Let's set the strict mode off for now. And names for it just gives us an empty. Now, if you're scripting and you're referencing a value like this, and for some reason you don't notice that your array doesn't have that index position, you will almost never find out because you will never get an error, which is why I always really like to set this on just to make debugging easier in the future and makes your life a whole lot easier. So let's just run this again so we get Paul. Now the second way to add an item to an array is by doing the names, dollar sign names, plus equals, and let's add Tim here. So if we do that, and let's print off the array. Now we can see that Tim is added in, and if we reference the position four now, we can see Tim is there. Now we can also remove an element. So let's actually remove John here, which is in the middle of our array, just so you can really see that we could remove a very specific item and not necessarily the one at the beginning or the one at the end. So we're gonna do a dollar sign names equals dollar sign names and a dash not equals to John. And now if we go and print off the array, we will see that it is now Bob, Steve, Paul, and Tim. John is now removed from the list. So let me just go over this line here. This is basically saying that our array of our array names is now going to equal names where it's not equal to John. So it just really removes John. It's a little bit hard to read. I personally prefer array lists. Um, the way to add and remove items becomes very, very easy with array lists. More straightforward, better performing. And I'm definitely an array list fans. Um, so let's go ahead and let's actually show you array lists here. So let's just separate that here. And let's do name list. And then to create an array list, we're going to put equals and we're going to do square brackets. And we are going to go ahead and reference the system.collections.arraylist. And then the at symbol and open close parentheses. And let's go ahead and let's look at the get type on this and the fixed size property. Because this will show you the difference almost right away between the two. So let's generate this and let's do the get type. And we can see that it is an array list and the fixed size is false. So PowerShell will automatically resize this array to either bigger or smaller, depending on what methods we call. So now let's go ahead and let's add and remove some items to this list. So let's first, let's just create some basic names in here. So let's again, let's put Bob, let's put John back in this list here. And let's put Tim here. We generate this. And let's print off this name list. We can see that it is Bob, John, John, and Tim. And again, we could reference the item one, which would be the second item, which will be John. And we can add and remove items to this list as well. So let's see how that's done for array list. Now that's going to be name list. We're going to do the dot notation and we're going to do add here. And we are going to add the name of Mike. Now, if we do this, 
And now we can see that PowerShell returns a value here, Brie. What happens when you add a item to an array list, you will get back the index position that it got added to. Um, to simply get rid of that, we could simply just do a dollar sign null equals names list dot add. This will just eliminate the output. It won't change anything. Um, so let's, before we do this here, let's go ahead and let's just print off this names list. And we will see Bob, John, John, Tim, and Mike. So if we do dollar sign null equals names list dot add, and let's add Steve in here with the dollar sign null at the beginning. So we shouldn't get any output of index position. And here we see we did not get the output position back. And if we print off the names list, we will see that Steve is in there. Now, what we can do here to remove an item from a names list, very simply, we're going to try to remove Tim this time, again, right in the middle of the array list. So let's do name list dot remove. And here we can just remove a very specific item by putting it in. And if we do this, we remove it. And if we actually reference names list again, we will see Bob, John, Mike, and Steve. Tim has been removed. Now you could do another remove option, which is going to be name list dot remove at. And this is going to remove at the index position. So here we can see that Bob is in the first position. So let's put index zero here. And let's do names list. So in theory, we should just see John, Mike, and Steve now. And that's what we get back. Now, you're probably wondering, seems to be the same performance, doesn't really seem to be that much faster with array lists other than the dot add and dot remove being very, very much more visually intuitive of what you're doing to the array list. So let's actually run two commands here. Uh, you don't really have to worry too, too much about these commands. Um, they are commandlets called measure command. And then I pass in an expression to them and it tells me how much time that expression takes. Um, so here we are going to be creating an array and an array list. And then we are going to be doing a measure command for the first 50,000 numbers. And we are going to add those to the array. And same thing for the array list. We're going to take the first 50,000 numbers and add them to the array list. So let's go ahead and let's run this code here. And I will see you when it is done and we will show you the results. All right, welcome back guys. So we just ran this command here. So here we can see the first command, which was for the array. We added the 50,000 items. It took one minute and 10 seconds. So it took a total of 70 seconds to add 50,000 items to the array. Now, if we go to the second one, which is the array list where we added 50,000 items, it took 260 milliseconds. So it didn't even take an entire second. So it is definitely much faster. If you are dealing with a lot of items, you are definitely going to want to do an array list. Uh, because if you're talking about, if you're dealing with customer data or stats data, or, and you don't know the data set size, and you find out that you're dealing with maybe 100,000 pieces of data, and you're constantly making changes to this array, constantly removing, constantly adding items. Maybe you're doing 200,000 operations on this array or array list. 
it could definitely get very, very lengthy with other commands in there if you're using an array. So I would definitely recommend using an array list. It's very easy. There's just a little bit more setup with referencing the collections a library and specifying an array list and then creating it a little bit more syntax to know with the dot add and dot remove but i think that it, it's much simpler than doing the plus and doing the dash not equals i really believe that for any case you should be using an array list now in my next video we're going to be going over hash tables and we're going to be going over custom objects. So what, what that's going to be is going to be different types of container objects. And after that, we are going to start combining some of the stuff together that we've learned with variables, arrays, hash tables. And we're going to start implementing some logic statements and some conditional statements. And we're going to actually start scripting, uh, which is where things get really fun. And I will see you on the next video.